Hi everyone, Pat Doherty with today's Tennis IQ topic. Approach shot tactics featuring famous Federer's big freeze, I call it. We know the percentage patterns create like a bone structure for point development for these top players. So they're highly predictable to go back cross court when pulled wide in the rally because it's the best shot for their court position. It's kind of highly predictable. Also, the majority of the time they're gonna be coming in down the line because that's the best choice for their court position. So it does create a pattern of predictability opponents can anticipate. Not a problem if there isn't a lot for the opponent to gain from that anticipation skill. But let me show you how they do create variety within those patterns. So they're still hitting shots that are good for their court position, but creating uncertainty in the mind of the opponent. What kind of shot do you think he's set up to hit here with that racket preparation? Because that's going to determine whether the opponent takes an early jump to try to cover the shot. So we've got to assume he's going down the line here because it's the best shot for his court position. So we're going to lean a little towards that selection. We also can tell he's not set up to attack my short court unless he turns it into an angle of some sort. So if he is going down the line, we know he's going to try to penetrate deep with this setup. So that kind of gives me a little direction on where I think I need to be going to next and what kind of depth I'm going to have to deal with. How about here, though? The approach shot, he's presenting the chip forehand. Now some might read that as a drop shot coming. Others might see it as a deep chip that he's going to send to the baseline or anything in between those depths, right? He purposely will show you this preparation early if you're the opponent because he wants to see if he can get a reaction out of you. If he sees you start to make a move to run down a drop shot, he's going to go with the deep chip because he hadn't played the ball yet. If he sees you hanging in the backcourt reading this as a deep chip, he's likely to attack your short court with a drop shot as a setup to closing with a volley behind it. Not an outright drop shot winner most of the time. So this is one way you can really stymie your opponents and make them not only wonder about your attack left and right, but deep and short as well. It becomes a multi-dimensional game plan to execute that really keeps him even at 38, 39 years old in the top three in the world. So we'll take a look at how he does this in the next slide. So spend some time working on your touch as well as your power and practice learning to disguise the use of the deep short court by combining your slice setup with drop shots. Great strategy. I'll let you finish watching. Oui, oui. Il aime bien faire ce coup, hein. Roger Federer depuis quelques années. Pas l'impression que, que son épouse Mirka ait regardé ce coup, elle avait l'air... Euh... <laughs> Not sure what Federer was doing with that little slice to the song of all, but he... C'est beau ça. Ah, ça le public apprécie. Feinte euh, d'amorti, amis vers le ciel. Regardez, le joueur s'avance et là, hop, on accélère. Et derrière, voler lifté. Ah, ça, c'est des, des petites choses euh, simples, mais alors.
Because look where Robredo starts the point from. Oh, that's <laughs> the fake drop shot. Turn your body sideways. So not just a fake drop shot, but fake it as if it's going to the backhand side. Look at this. And then at the last minute, just sort of a flick down the line. That's not a good feeling when you're on the eye. You've been fooled that badly. Creative shots in this match. And there's another one. 